everyone, it's Chantel from Crow Chantel, and welcome to this tutorial on how to crochet a comb. I will be covering two different techniques. The first will be the increase and then single crochet technique. That is what I used for this comb. The other is the constant increase method. That is the technique I used for the second comb. Let's get into this video. The materials that you'll need include a crochet hook, a darning or sewing needle, a stitch marker, I personally use a bobby pin, some scissors, some stuffing, I use polyfill, and super bulky yarn in the color of your choice. The stitches and terminology you need to know for this tutorial are single crochet, increase, decrease, magic ring, fastening off, and working in the back loop only. The first technique that we will be trying is the increase and then single crochet method. To start, we will be making a magic ring. As some of you know, I like to close off my magic rings before working single crochets into them, but it is ultimately your choice. So for round one, we will be doing six single crochets around. And this is what your work should look like. For rows two and three, we will simply be single crocheting around, hence the increase and then single crochet method. You can do as many rows of single crochet as you would like, but for this example, I will be doing two rows of single crochet between increases. And this is what it should look like. For round four, we will be increasing to 12 stitches. To do this, you will do six increases all around. See the chart on the screen for reference as to how to increase to any size up to 72 stitches around. This is what it should look like so far. Once again, I will do two rounds of single crochet. It's important to keep up a consistent number of single crochets between each increase. And this is what your cone should look like so far. Off camera, I will be increasing mine to 24 stitches around, but feel free to increase to whichever amount you would like. And this is what it looks like after increasing to 24. I am now going to close up the bottom. For this row, I will be working in the back loop only. You don't have to do this, but I am choosing to, so then you can see a clear distinction between the bottom and the cone. So for this row, as you can see on the screen, to go from 24 stitches to 18 stitches, I will have to do two single crochets and then a decrease. I will have to do this for a total of six times around remembering to only work in the back loop only. And this is what your cone should look like after decreasing to 18. 
I am now going to take the time to stuff my cone. When stuffing a cone, it's important to work in small increments. You need to be sure that stuffing is getting to the tip of the cone. Be sure to not overstuff your work. You want to make sure that the bottom of the cone lays flat. We will now be working on the next row. Once again, if you look at the screen, to decrease from 18 stitches to 12 stitches, I will have to do a single crochet and then a decrease. I will now work on the last row. To do this, to go from 12 stitches to 6 stitches, I will have to do 6 decreases. To finish off, I will slip stitch into the next stitch and cut a long tail to sew the opening closed. This is what it should look like. Now, take your darning needle, or sewing needle, and weave the tail onto it going through the front loops only of the remaining six stitches, weave the yarn through. Once you have woven through all of the stitches, pull the yarn tight to close the opening. Tie a simple knot to make sure that your work doesn't unravel and weave the yarn tail into the cone. And this is what your finished cone should look like if you followed my method of doing 24 stitches with two rows of single crochet. You may also choose to just do one row of single crochet between increases. That is what I did with the cone on the left. With this cone, I did three rows of single crochet between increases. As you can see, the more rows you do, the longer the cone will be. But you can also see that it becomes more apparent when your increases are. So keep that in mind when creating your cones. The second method is the constant increase method. We will once again start off with a magic ring. And for row one, we will simply do six single crochets into the magic ring. And this is what it should look like. For the next row, we will be increasing to nine stitches instead of increasing to the typical 12. To do this, you will do one single crochet and then an increase for a total of three times. For the next row, we will be increasing to 12. To do that, do two single crochets and then an increase for a total of three times. It is around this point that you will see the cone shape start to form. And this is what your work should look like. 
I am going to continue to 24 stitches around using the guide that's available on the screen, but feel free to increase to whichever size suits you best. This is what my cone looks like now that I have increased to 24 stitches. I am now going to close up the bottom. Since I will be using the exact same method as I did with the first cone that I made, I will not be displaying it on screen. If you need a reminder, go back and watch it again. And this is what the finished cone should look like once it is stuffed. See how the increase is a lot more consistent and the shape is not as irregular as seen with the large cone. If you would like to use this method but have a steeper slope or overall just making the cone longer, use the instructions on the screen. It follows a similar method as I used with this one but they are slightly al altered. I just did not decide to make them for this video. Thank you so much for watching my video. Comment down below which technique is your favorite. I personally do not like the increase and then single crochet method as much as the continuous increase, but it is ultimately your choice, depending on what you are going for, for your creation. Just a reminder that I post every Tuesday, giving you guys amigurumi basics, so subscribe if you would like to see more.